this is obviously too harsh and I wouldn't say this, but like we're not that cool or we're not like, it's not like inaccessible. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a hardware engineer with Google Quantum AI. The path that I took, I would say, is fairly atypical if you look at the current landscape of um, people that we have working in the field. So I graduated from Washington State University with a Bachelor's of Science in Physics. And from there, I went directly to working for this outdoor educational camp that focuses on experiential learning of physics and astronomy. What I really appreciated about that experience was you really learn that you don't know things until you have to explain them to other people, especially to fifth graders. From there, I went back into lab work, and that's where I got my first job in the quantum computing field and really started to develop the skills that I have now and have built on to then do the work that I do with Google. The quantum AI group is focused on building an error-corrected quantum system. I think a common misconception about the field of quantum computing is that you need to know quantum mechanics like the back of your hand. It's actually very multidisciplinary, starting with electrical engineers who design and then make the devices that we put into our fridges. There are mechanical engineers who actually build and organize the installation of our fridges. There's people who do the calibration, and there's software engineers, programmers, and then our physicists as well. I fit into the calibration team where we need to take a processor that we know a little bit about based on the design parameters from the fabrication team, but then actually turn those into real control voltages and parameters that can enable the algorithms that happen later. So there's a lot about building tools in order to enable that error corrected system, making sure the fridges are reliable and scalable, while also making sure the software is running in a reliable way. So we can successfully hand off the device to different teams. So what I like about my job is that it's pretty diverse day to day. I can go from one hour being a software engineer, writing new measurement techniques, to a systems engineer in the next hour, making sure all of our cables are organized and plugged in correctly, to then personnel manager, making sure all these systems are talking to each other appropriately. I would say I really am inspired by the colleagues that I work with. It's like people that you're close to who you see doing cool things and that kind of like normalizes a little bit more and be like, oh, I can also do that. And then it makes it a little bit more accessible and lets you kind of dream a little bit bigger. Additionally, we just work with a lot of smart people. Everyone has their own corner that they know really well. And so you can pick up experience from other people. My proudest moment has to do with one of the most recent systems that we built. So when I say system, I mean everything from the chip that we get from fabrication to the dilution refrigerator that it sits in, that cryogenically cools it to the temperature that we need, to the software and all of the cabling involved to make the whole system work. We were able to take a lot of the process learning that we had done from the previous systems, integrate that into this system, and then make it work reliably fairly quickly, which has enabled many researchers on a team across many different sites to conduct their research. I think this speaks to the maturity of the team, moving from a world where we're just trying to get an experiment going as quick as possible, to really making sure we build reliable systems that we can trust for any experiment going forward. Process is important because we all make mistakes, including myself. I've fallen victim to trying to rush through an experiment. There was a deadline we were trying to hit, and I forgot to complete the radiation shielding on the upper stages of the fridge, which meant the fridge didn't get cold, which is basically the only function of the fridge. <laughs> I didn't know very much about supergenic qubits when I first started working with the quantum AI team, but all my colleagues were really patient and able to teach me, and we're all learning from each other every day. If you're watching this and want to learn more, go to quantumai.google, and you can one, see what our research efforts are, and two, look at our careers page for open job roles and internships. So at Google Quantum AI, we're focused <laughs> We're focused on building an error, error corrected. So Google, um, mm -mm. <laughs> the quantum AI group at Google is focused on building an error corrected quantum system. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks for bearing with me.